patient, it doesn't happen. And they spend a lot of time arguing about where is the line between micro and macro. Well, I don't know exactly where the line is in some cases. I think that might be a good field of research. But that certainly doesn't mean the other ones are included. See, the other five definitions are smuggled into the textbook, riding on the coattails of examples of macroevolution. They're just smuggled in, folks. There's no evidence for them at all. I defy somebody to show me some evidence. We've got no argument with truth. Man, I love truth. I love science. But evolution has no scientific evidence to back it up. Truth comes from God. I'd like to see some evidence to back, back up evolution. We welcome any challenge. I have a standing offer. We offer a quarter million dollars for proof for evolution. I mean, come on, let's have it. And I, I, I pay for my tickets to fly to do these debates. It's so hard to find an opponent. I, honestly, I don't, I'm not a professional debater. I've never had a class on debate in my life. And usually the evolutionists are a lot smarter than I am, but I'm right and they're wrong. <laughs> it's very easy to win a debate like that. We only object to lies being included in with the textbooks. If there's some real evidence for evolution, I would like to see it. There is none. In advertising, what's called, it's called bait and switch. It happened tonight already. Uh, Dr. Hartman gave his definition of evolution. Look at this textbook. Evolution is change over time. Is that really what they mean? In other words, there is no doubt living things have changed over time. Well, I agree with that definition. This textbook says evolution can be defined as a change in species over time. Okay, if that's really what you mean, I agree. Evolution happened. But that is not really what they mean. They, soak, they, they suck the kids into believing in evolution with this one definition, change over time, which everybody's going to agree with. You're different than your parents, aren't you? Of course you are. And then as the kids get indoctrinated, they slip in the other cosmic evolution, Big Bang, organic evolution. And they're told, if you don't believe in all this other five, then you don't understand science. Well, <laughs> I resent that. I was in a debate in El Paso, Texas a few weeks ago, and the professor basically said over and over throughout the debate, well, you know, the average person just doesn't understand the complexities of this topic. I said, folks, what he's trying to say is, he's smart and you are dumb. That's what he's very much trying to, not to avoid saying, but that's what he means. There is no evidence. See, variations happen, but they have limits. I agree variations happen. You might get a big pig or a little pig, but you're still going to get a pig, and there's a limit. You're never going to get one as big as Texas. There's a limit. Roaches become resistant to pesticides, but they'll never become resistant to a sledgehammer. There's a limit. And it's still a roach, by the way. They don't produce any new kind of plant or animal. Variations happen. Christ Christians and creationists have no argument with that, but they have limits. Big dogs and little dogs are still a dog, and nothing new is added to the gene pool. Thank you. Form where he can go through slides, you know, zip, 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 here you go, I'm right. And everybody goes, yes, we're all good Christians, we, we, we accept that. Um, I would ask him to, to accept one of those debates where he can put his, his thoughts in words where everybody can see them, give his evidence, put it up there, let people scrutinize it, give people a chance to respond to it in writing, give people time to think about it. That's what I would like to see. I came here tonight not because I think you all are dumb. I don't. If I did that, I wouldn't be here. I don't think my students are dumb. I'm not trying to indoctrinate my freshman class. It may surprise a lot of you to know that, you know, I carry one of these around with me a lot. Bible. I tell my students to read the Bible. Especially if you're going to go talk about evolution and you're going to talk about creationism. You need to know what's in here, folks. The same way I would tell you that if you read nothing but the Bible, you're being misled too. You need to read what's in the science textbooks. Not just listen to what one man comes here and tells you. Read what it says in the science books. One thing I will take issue with, when you put up a quote from somebody and you see those little dot, dot, dots in them like you saw in the Darwin quote, there's something missing there. That means you're paraphrasing. You're, you're quoting something, but you're only quoting the parts of something you want somebody to see, and you're leaving out the parts that you don't think somebody should see. That's a little misleading. If you're going to put a quote up by somebody, if you're going to quote somebody, quote the whole thing. Read the whole thing. I understand time constraints, but you know, I'm not up here quoting anybody. I'm not up here telling you what somebody else says. I'm up here telling you what I have to say. Okay? Let's see what else. I wrote quite a few notes. Um, interesting that when I said that creationists believe the earth is 10,000 years old, Mr. Hovind said 6,000 is what it says in the Bible. Um, somebody correct me, because I'm, I'm kind of rusty on this, but Adam was created on the sixth day. Is that correct? Well, in Paul, he says a day unto God is like a thousand years unto us. 
So on the sixth day, the earth was already 6,000 years old. If you add 6,000 years to that, which is the time since Adam, that makes the earth at least 12,000 years old, not 6,000 years old. Yeah, yeah, I know, I'm nitpicking, I'm splitting hairs, but you know, if you're gonna stand up there and tell somebody, the earth is 6,000 years old and here's my evidence, and it's scientific evidence, or whatever kind of evidence you're going to provide, I have to be able to go and refute it. That's what science is all about. If I put up something here that you don't agree with, feel free to go after it, attack it viciously. Evolution is not a religion, it's a theory. It's no worse than the theory of gravity. I've got a set of keys here. Anybody want to take a $250,000 bet that if I let go of these keys, they will not hit the floor? Put your faith in the theory of gravity. Well, not faith, but trust in the theory of gravity. You know, Einstein was right about it. Lots of other scientists have been right about it. If you reject evolutionary theory, you're not just rejecting what he would consider somebody's religion. You have to throw out geology, physics, chemistry, archaeology, anthropology, biology, all of those ologies, all of the sciences, all of the things, by the way, we benefit from. You know, modern medicine is based on biology, it's based on evolutionary theory. Our ability to treat viruses is based on our ability to cope with their evolution. One of the reasons why the HIV virus is so difficult to treat is because it, because it mutates so rapidly, it changes. Let's see, what else? Capable of reproducing, his definition of kind. Able, two organisms able to reproduce. Definition of species, the scientific definition of species are two organisms that mate naturally and produce fertile offspring. Kind of left out the fertile part, right? You can take a horse and a horse, and what are you gonna get? Somebody tell me. Horse, horse kind. Take a, a, a donkey and a donkey, and what are you gonna get? Donkey. Take a horse and a donkey, and what do you get? Mule. Take a mule and a mule, and what do you get? Nothing. What happened? Wait a minute, they should be able to reproduce after their kind. If they're all the same kind of animal, you should be able to get a mule and a mule together and produce more mules. You can't do it that way, folks. You have to start out with a horse and a donkey. Maybe they're the same kind. If they're the same kinds, they should be able to reproduce after their kind. And their kind should be able to reproduce after their kind. But they can't. There's a problem there. Oh, the fan's blowing my notes. Thank you. Yeah, I've tripped over that a couple of times. You have to be careful with the podium up here. We don't see stars form. Well, you know, I've seen some images from the Hubble telescope that look pretty impressive. Star formation. You should check out NASA's website. They have some pretty amazing photographs, not just of star destruction, but of star formation. Public schools don't like the idea of evolution being taught in public schools. Well, you know, that's a matter of, of uh, personal opinion also. And you talk about not letting the majority rule, that's the whole basis of this country. We're getting ready to elect a new president. How are we going to do that? One small minority says, I'm right, oops, excuse me, and you're wrong, therefore I get to pick the president. Is that how we do it? The majority of scientists don't uh, uh, just sit around and say, oh, we all agree on this, so you all are wrong, and we're right, and we win. Doesn't work that way. Carl Sagan once said, um, you know, we're for science because it's been tested repeatedly and it works. If we found an alternative, you know, we're not out there trying to trick you. I'm not an